Right. So um, this is for our spot on spotlight. What we do is every month we interview either a broker or a client who is using our products um, just to kind of feature them and feature what they do. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you some questions and uh, we'll kind of jump into it here if you're ready. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So can you tell me a little bit about uh, your business and what you guys do? Sure. Um, we specialize in uh, emergency response cleanup in the crime scene, hoarding, meth lab, and mold remediation. Yeah, that's pretty intense. Um, I know on your guys' website, I was surprised about how much you guys exactly do. Um, so yeah, how did you get into this? <laughs> Um, I spent seven years in law enforcement right out of college, mm -hmm. and that's where I got the idea to start up the company. Now you saw there was a need for, um, I guess, kind of stuff that isn't shown in a TV show where, you know, after all the detectives and everything are gone, um, what happens after to that family's home? Right. So, yeah, back in 2005, um, I saw the need for it after several families were going through kind of hard situations and mm -hmm. the, the general public is under the impression that police not only investigate the crime but they clean it up and that couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, so mm -hmm. when I kept hearing the same thing, you know, when are you guys going to clean this up? I thought that's quite odd that they would assume <laughs> that. Um, yeah. So I started looking into it myself and I found that there was definitely a huge void at that time back in 2005 for our services so um, I went and got some training uh, in certifications and then I started I started providing the service oh, that's fantastic so you do do you do a lot of work with law enforcement is it usually private citizens who call you after yeah so the the law enforcement really doesn't get involved when it comes to the cleanup of people's homes and private property they really don't have mm -hmm. anything to do with that type of thing. Um, so, it, you know, in the city streets and in public places are really regulated by the state. Uh, so I'm in Florida. Florida has no regulations requiring that cleanup, but like the state of California does. So it really varies per state. Interesting. I can see how it would be difficult to navigate and make sure yeah. you're complying with all of it. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so then why franchising, why not just do a one-off? What made you want to get into that? You know, um, we found initially we were going to just open other corporate-owned offices, and we found them very difficult to manage from, from a distance. Yeah. Um, and then we were using subcontractors to handle all of the work that we were getting in other states. Um, and we, we just found that the, the training was poor, the quality was poor, and they just weren't held accountable. Uh, so that was that's where I got the idea in 2014 to uh, to franchise our business, and that way we would have the training and the systems and the processes all under one umbrella. And it's so far it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, I can tell just from looking at your website and your YouTube account. Uh, and I want to go back to what you talked about about quality. That seems to be something, and of course, with this type of cleanup, it has to be something you guys really pride yourselves on in all of your locations, all of your. Um, employees and crew members. Can you maybe talk to me a little bit about that um, and yeah. how you know kind of how that works. Yeah, the 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 problem with the industry is it's very unregulated. So there's a lot of um, you know janitors and maid type services that are getting into the cleanup without the proper knowledge or training. So and technically it's not illegal because there's just really lack of regulation on it. So we're very big on not only following OSHA type regulations, but uh, several states have uh, health department regulations requiring the disposal of uh, disposal of mm -hmm. these items, incineration or autoclave or whatnot. So we go we harp on that quite a bit in training. Um, so just to avoid any bad stuff going to a normal landfill. Yeah, of course, as well as safety for your workers and then the yeah. family or business owner or whoever is going to be in the property afterwards. Exactly. Um, so um, with that, kind of how did you guys find out about Zoracle or what kind of led you to us? Well, we found out about Zoracle uh, through a broker that was submitting clients to us that had Zoracle profiles. 
Um, so okay. instead of kind of being reactive to it and just kind of receiving these profiles and, you know, trying to figure out and, and ascertain, you know, are these good fits for us, that's when I figured mm -hmm. we needed to establish our own account and get our own algorithm so we could start compiling a good uh, personality assessment of, of who we were looking for so we could be successful when we're vetting these people. Um, it's, I found in franchising that it's, it's extremely difficult to vet these people because you get such limited exposure to them. Uh, other than a few phone calls and maybe one meeting, that's about all you get. So we're, we were mm -hmm. looking for other tools to assist us in vetting these people to make sure that they're a good fit for us. Yeah, you know what you mentioned that really hits on a point that um, I've talked to a lot of franchisors about, and they really have that issue of, you know, you, you're selling this person, and this is going to be part of your franchise, part of your name, part of your brand, mm -hmm. and, and you don't know them that well. No, you I mean, don't. basic information, but you know, and, and it's kind of a risk you're taking as, as a franchisor. I mean, they're taking a risk in buying a business, but you're also taking a risk in letting this person um, become part of it. So. Yeah, and it, that, and in my opinion, that is the most difficult thing in franchising because you know if a franchisee fails, uh, the franchisor is automatically blamed for it, regardless of the reason that the franchisee failed. Oh yeah, of course. So we're required to expensive. you know take their word for it on their capital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like they're they're submitting bank account statements to us or anything. So I found that that to be the most difficult thing. So when I found Zoracle, I thought this is perfect because it's going to give me a great assessment of whether this person is a good fit for our system. Fantastic. So about how many franchisees do you guys have currently? Uh, up and running, we've got three locations, but we have seven more Fantastic. that are opening up here uh, by the end of July. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Congratulations. So we took a pause for a while because, you know, we didn't have all the systems and processes. So mm -hmm. it took about a six to eight month pause last year and didn't do any recruitment at all because we're trying to get all of our systems being Zoracle being one of them. And um, January 1st, we were we had it all in place here. So then we, we decide to uh, to launch everything back and, and uh, we really don't even advertise at all. It's just all been word of mouth. We haven't done, we don't even have a franchise website yet. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so, so, yeah, uh... so we're, we're getting a decent <laughs> amount of inquiries without any any type of independent advertising. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting business. I mean, you mention what you do, and people are just naturally curious. They are. They are. <laughs> That's different. one benefit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So on that note, kind of what are some unique leveraging points that you have to get new franchisees? You know, when people are interested, um, what are kind of some of the key points that people like about doing this? I think people are interested in the fact that this business is recession-proof. Uh, people are still really, um, their memory is still really fresh on the, the last crash, uh, whether they yeah, lost their jobs or they lost a ton of money in the 401k. So I see time and time again when I get candidates, they are all asking for the same thing. We want something recession-proof. We want to diversify because we don't want to lose what we had like we did, you know, in 2007. That's been the number one point. And, you know, our business actually doubled in sales in uh, 2007 when the market crashed because foreclosures went up and so we get a lot of work through the foreclosure crisis. Yeah, of course, cleaning out houses and yep. all kinds of Meth stuff, lab, I'm sure. Mold. You know, those houses were sitting forever so they were covered in mold. Uh, so, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a nightmare <laughs> for everybody. It really, <laughs> really was. I mean, you know, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they could hardly keep up with the with the yeah. volume of foreclosures and you know us being in Florida, I think we were the second uh, in the country to have the most foreclosures. So it was definitely a crisis here. Absolutely. So then, how do your uh, how do your employees and I mean you deal with um, you know the the job itself? I mean it's fairly well. Most people would consider it fairly, pretty gross work. I mean just dealing with the you know gnarly insides of people's houses, cleanup after crime scenes. Um, the death of a loved one, dealing with grieving, you know, your customers may be in the grief process. How is that handled? And it kind of takes a yeah, special we, kind of person to be able to do that. It is. And we look for uh, franchise owners as well as employees that have the ability to show empathy. 
uh, towards mm -hmm. these families. Um, but we train quite a bit on how to handle these type of customers in these type of situations because we're really meeting these people at the worst times in their lives. Uh, what oh, helps yeah. us get through some of this is the fact that we didn't know the deceased. We don't know what they look like. We don't know anything about them. So when we get there, we're, we're essentially just cleaning up a mess. Um, for the True. way we look at it, it could just be somebody that just poured a gallon of oil on a bed or on the floor. That's the way we look at mm -hmm. it. It's like build milk, a typical mess. We don't get involved in any type of backstory or knowledge of who the deceased was. And I think that helps us separate from the hum human component of it and what, what our job yeah. is. I agree. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, I'm kind of pivoting around back to, you know, franchisees. And you guys said you were expanding um, in the next couple months or so. So how do you guys normally get your leads? Is it um, just through your own interest, you know, people calling you asking about it, or is it through brokers like you mentioned mostly? Well, at, the, at this point, it's really been through um, – the majority of them have been coming through brokers that just really love the brand. They're pushing the brand because, uh, like I said, we don't even ha our our franchise website is not even up yet. So, other mm -hmm. than our current service website, we really don't have any independent way to go after them. So, we're going to start to diversify a little bit more. But we've been getting such a great response from brokers uh, that just love the model, and it's really hitting home with the uh, the corporate type owner who uh, either lost a ton of money in the 401k or they feel the pressure of how they might be downsized. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so just kind of wrap things up here. Um, so with the Zorgal tool, have you considered or have you thought about using that and how you market either to incoming franchisees like you mentioned or internally with the current employees and franchisees you have? We already do both. So we tell the franchisee candidates up front that they will be taking this uh, profile and that we take it very seriously and they need to answer, you know, as, as best of their ability because we're looking for a very specific type of person. Um, you know, I spoke with Rebecca and we're very early in the franchising process, so we're still really trying to uh, tighten up our algorithm to find that perfect yeah. candidate. So right now we're just having everybody take the assessment and then we're going to kind of hammer it down from there. But I've, I've required my employees to take it as well. And I've utilized that to find out kind of what their strengths and weaknesses are and what makes them tick. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of the um, big utilizations for this tool is the internal marketing aspect of your current employees, what you can do to help them you know, excel and succeed with either their franchise, if they own it, or, or being the best employee for that franchisee. Right. Um, I think that's really useful. Absolutely. All right. Well, that wraps it up for me. All right.